Is it? McGill. Glad you've come. Why the state of siege? I don't know. What are you doing in this place? Well, we moved in three days ago. You're the first person we've seen. Well, where is he? In the back room. He hasn't told you anything about what's going on? All I know is he's frightened. He's frightened for his life. McGill, help him. Who is it, Mary? It's McGill. What are you saying, Helen? I knew you'd come. Come on. Thanks for coming, McGill. There's nobody else who could have asked. Okay. Now, what's going on? What's the trouble, Nolan? I've got to get out of the country. I've got to get out tonight. Why? What have you done? The police after you? No. Somebody's after you. That's right. Now, what for? What have you done? I've been a private investigator for 20 years. And the only dangerous thing I ever did was to take a picture. Whose picture? What picture are you talking about? And you burned it? Yes. I burned everything. And you told me absolutely nothing. As long as you don't know anything, then nothing will happen to you. Mm -hmm. Look, McGill, all I want you to do is to take me to town, hide me, and then get me on the plane. That's all. I don't like working blind, Nolan. Better blind than dead. Look, I'm not asking for charity. I'll give you 500 pounds for one day's work. Shall I pour it out? No. Look, I don't know what this is all about, but... I don't either. He's depending on you. Why? Well, you're his friend. Oh, is that what it is? We're old friends? Aren't you? Well, we worked together a few times. Spent four or five days together on a job. I think I even had dinner with you once. I think that entitles you to blind faith, Nolan? He's desperate, you can see that. He even sent me to buy his airplane ticket for him. He's so desperate, he hasn't given me one ounce of information. But for your own good. Oh, I've heard that before. It's the truth. What I've stumbled on is too dangerous. Tell him whatever it is. I can't, Mary. If I tell him, it'll finish him the way I'm finished. McGill, please, he trusts you. Listen, I'm just a human being. I'm vulnerable. You step on an insect, he dies, he doesn't even know why. Well, I'm not ready to die that way, not yet. Not even for your husband, man. Tell him. I can't. I shouldn't have asked him. But I was so scared to death, and there's no one else. Now get out of here and forget you ever saw me. I'll manage by myself. Take it easy. Just relax. Relax. Okay. You ready to go? Packed? safe side. your phone twice while you were out. Oh, he did. Well, if he calls again, tell him I'm still out. In fact, if anybody calls, tell him I'm out for the day, okay? Why not? Thank you. Can you trust her? Sure. She's another old friend of mine. Well, my home is yours. Just drop that anywhere. 
Yeah, Nolan, we could uh, sit around here and try to throw cards into a hat or play checkers or something, or you could just tell me everything you know. Could you do one more thing for me? Or I could do one more thing for you. Cash a check at my bank. I could have done that on the way here. They might have seen me. Who? Who might have seen you? It's, it's better if you didn't know. It's better for you. Believe me. Oh, come on. I've heard that story before. Hey, look at that. You got me nervous now. About your fee. Forget it. Well, this check's made out for 3,000 pounds. You keep 500. Oh, I couldn't do that. Not between old friends. We made a deal. Okay. I'm not gonna argue with you. Now listen, you lock this door behind me and when I get back, I'll knock three times and say, here comes Charlie. No. no lock the door and you keep the key. Well, what good's that gonna do? I feel safer. Okay. Now just take it easy, Nolan. I should have to ask for some form of identification, sir. Why? Mr. Nolan's never drawn such a large check before. It's just a formality in our client's interest. Thanks, sir. I was young and smart when that was taken. How would you like it, sir? In money. Here comes Charlie now. Relax. Just relax. Who is he? He doesn't know anything. He's a friend. I haven't told him. I haven't told anybody. I know how to keep my mouth shut. You don't have to worry. I'm not worrying. I'm getting out of the country so you can forget about me. I'll never talk, I swear to you. He doesn't know anything? No. Nobody does. Good. You can trust me. It was all a mistake, you see. An accident. Believe me. Oh, no. Please, no! Like a gun. You better see about it. It's not my business. Well, you're a man. I never want it to be. It's your hotel. Mr. McGill? need for you to worry.
hurry going to be? A few minutes, madam. The police car's on its way. Tell him to hurry. He's coming now. Keep out of his way. Don't try to stop him. Oh, look, you've got to come quickly. Get out of sight. Get down. Hey! You tell him I'll be in touch. <laughs> Cream shirts, another yes. envelope with uh, press clippings. Ah, here's something nice. <laughs> they do love their little game. Yes? I'm Martin, sir. I picked up the call. Where is she? I proceeded by car to the Nolans' home, 17 Warburton. Yes. Mrs. Nolan was not at home. Neighbours report they haven't seen her or him for the last two or three days. Well, which is it? Two or three? All right, get back then. Yes, sir. Inspector George here. Who? Oh, well, release this. His name's McGill with a big M and a big G. American, six feet, early 30s, about 13 stone. Slate gray hair. McGill is urgently wanted by the police for questioning in connection with the fatal shooting of Thomas Nolan this afternoon. Anyone possessing any information concerning the whereabouts of McGill is urged to get in touch with Scotland Yard immediately. He is described by the police as liable to be dangerous and is believed to be carrying a pistol. He never harmed anyone. Never in his life. Why should anyone want to... What had he done? He just uncovered something he couldn't handle. He was a gentleman. He wasn't in the right business. He wasn't tough. It was just ordinary. You let them kill him. Why? Listen. Please help. They think I did it. And did you? No. Will they believe you? No. Well, then why should I? Now, you know me better than that. No, I don't. Well, why do you think he drug me down here? So I could kill him? And if I did kill him, I wouldn't come back here, would I? What you want me to do? Does Tyler's place mean anything to you? No. I think, please. Did he ever mention it? Tyler's place. You're after the money, aren't you? It's always money in your line of work. I've told him a hundred times to do something else, anything. But he liked the money. There's 3,000 pounds there in tens. And you can get a bank statement in the morning. I never heard of Tyler's place. He thought the world of you. Did you know that? He was always talking about you. Your cases. The clever things you did. McGill could handle anything. That's what he said. Uh, it's not in London. He was like a little boy. Hero worship. The great McGill. He trusted you and now he's dead. There's no one. You ever heard of a woman named Marion? Well, that's my name. Mary was his pet name for me. Any other pictures of you around here? No. What you doing? I'm uh, just playing detective. You know who she is? No. Which paper is this from? The, uh, the Chronicle. You sure? Well, we get it every day. Don't answer that. I've got to get them. Well, don't leave me alone. You'll be all right. You just lock that door after I go out and you call the police and tell them everything you know. Do you mean tell them about the pictures and everything? Right, tell them everything. And tell them I'm innocent. You've never heard of Nolan, I 
I suppose. Certainly. I hired him. To spy on me. It was your own fault. After all the care I've taken, you do your best to blow us wide open. A private detective, you must be crazy. It's your neck as well as mine, you know. I haven't as much to lose as you have. You've had what you've always wanted, haven't you? House, clothes, everything. Oh, yes, and my own company to enjoy it in. Oh. Left here to rot while you're with that woman. What woman? Oh, do you think I don't know? It's been going on for over a year now. I've watched the change in you. <laughs> you're dressing too young. Too young for you, maybe? You've got a woman. I hired Nolan to find out who she was. Why didn't you just complain to the police? Oh, don't worry. Nolan never even met me. I did it all by phone. By phone? So naturally he's suspicious. So he just trails me back here and gets a good look at you. He saw me? Yes. I didn't know. You should have thought. Your face, your lousy face, that's the one giveaway. I'm sick of your face. From now on, I'm going to make sure nobody sees it. Frank. Go to your room. Take your damn stupid giveaway face to your room and stay there. Stay there till you rot. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. I'd like to get a back number of the Chronicle. Date, please. Uh, there's an article in there on the sinking of the Cape Castle. Uh, when would that be? I'll try to find it for you. Fourteenth of September, nineteen sixty-six. Uh, thank you very much. this other man. Name of Miguel. You heard the radio. A detective, you think? I wouldn't know. But it was a break is coming in like that. You think so? Well, certainly. The cops think it was him. The whole force is out looking for him. <laughs> it worked out pretty clever. Too clever. You should have killed him. Oh, sure. And then who would the cops be looking for? Me? That'd it suit you fine, wouldn't it? So... McGill's after us with a gun you so conveniently left in his hand. And who's to know how much Nolan told him? Oh, you're clever. I only had a minute to make up my mind. It's easy to discuss it now, but you try being a genius when you've only got a split second to pull the trigger. I think I should do rather well. You may get the chance. We're getting out of England. We're getting out tonight. Scared? Rich and free. And I intend to stay that way. Uh, let me speak to Inspector Glenn, please. Tell him it's McGill. McGill? I hear you've been worried about me. Where are you? I'm pounding my beat. I want to see you. <laughs> That's not what you said last time we talked. Trace it. Notify Inspector George. There's a warrant out for your arrest, McGill. You know I didn't kill no one. Uh, who did? Did you ever get the Arnoldsons, the people who pulled that London airport job? Well, what's that to you? Yes or no? No. Now look here, McGill. Where to, sir? Tyler's place. Where's that, sir? Oh, I don't know. Just keep driving till you find it. Turning to news of the London area, police continue their citywide search for an American calling himself McGill who is wanted for questioning in connection with the killing of Thomas Nolan earlier today. They are appealing to the public for any information concerning this man who is believed to be armed. Police are also looking for Mrs. Nolan, wife of the murdered man, who has not been seen for several days. 
There is concern among the authorities that Mrs. Nolan may be in a position of some danger. She is asked to get in touch with the police as soon as possible. sure tireless places in London? Sure, I'm sure. I think you're wrong. I studied 18 months to get my licence. I know every back street in this wilderness, and I tell you, there's no such place. Look, we might as well pull in. No, wait a minute. Wait. Keep moving. And just keep on moving. You're wasting your money. Well, easy come, easy go. 427. 427. I found Tyler's place for you. It's in Kensington. Not in my book, it isn't. It wouldn't be. Tyler's place was demolished in 1946. It's in the survey. You hear that? Yeah, now let's go. Look, mate, this is a taxi, not a time machine. Just find out where it was. Just go there. I want to see the remains. I can't blame you. I'm sorry I spoke to you before the way I did. Are you? What you did was very foolish. It was the not knowing. Not being sure if there was someone else. And now that you're sure? It hurts very much, Frank. I didn't want you to know. What's so special about this girl of yours? Let's not discuss her. Is she young? Yes. Pretty? Yes. When you're old, will she stay with you? I doubt it. When you need more money, will she help you steal it? I doubt that, too. I'll forgive you, Frank. I have to leave the country. Yes, we can start again. Somewhere else with all that money. I can't take you with me, even if I wanted to. You're taking her. Listen, I'll get you out of the country if I could, but you'd be recognized if you tried to run. I could have the operation. Too late for that. Now? What are you going to do? Leave me here alone? What can I do? Oh, no. No, I won't let you go. I swear I won't. I won't spend the rest of my life alone, hiding, covering my face while you just run around the world with that woman on the money I helped you steal. No, Frank, if you go, I'll go to the police. I swear I will. Yes. I believe you would. But I don't want to, Frank. I just want to be with you. Oh, Frank, you can arrange it. You're a clever man. You can fix it so it can be like it used to no. be. No. That's impossible. Then tell me, Frank, what are we going to do? You shouldn't have hired Nolan. No, you wouldn't. Frank, I know you. You're a thief and a philandra, but you're not a murderer. What do you want? It's my instructions. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Well, it was this afternoon, wasn't it? There must be some mistake. Uh, isn't this 37 Albemarle Mews? Yeah. Well, 
check with clients to retravel arrangement. I didn't send for you. Well, someone did. Oh, it must have been. Oh, do come in. But he didn't tell me. Oh, well, you'd be surprised how many times one half doesn't know what the other half's doing. Uh, look, you'll be home fairly soon. Uh, will you wait? No, I better just get these details and then take off, if you don't mind. Yes. Uh, what's the name? Cunliffe. Angela Cunliffe. Going to? Bermuda. Bermuda. Tonight? That's right, yes. Uh, London Airport? Mm-hmm. What time? 10.50. 10.50. How many people? Just the two of us. But didn't they tell you this at the office? Well, they should have. Yes, why didn't they? I don't know. I suppose I should go and check. Yes, you had better. All right, I'll do that. And, uh, well, you have a nice trip. And don't worry about anything. I'll take care of everything from this end. Goodbye. Bye. Surrey versus Yorkshire, Surrey 317 for three, Barrington 147 not out. Leicestershire versus Sussex, Sussex all out 132. Lock 6 for 39, Leicestershire 131 for six. Lancashire. Uh, that's one game I never could get involved with. Let's get some music. Oh, I've got to hear the Middlesex score, go. Somerset, Somerset all out 215, Sidmouth 5 for 52, Middlesex 51 for two. Here is a police message. In connection with the murder today of Thomas Nolan... Come on, let's get some the music. police are anxious to trace a man who was the last... You like this music? It's beautiful. Terrible. Now what? Well, now, buddy, we just wait. Depends who you're expecting. Somebody very special. Like me. Love you. Mm. It's a going away present. Who from? You, darling. I've got good taste. You're marvelous. <laughs> Zip, please. Is that the lot? Aren't I good? I'll start loading. Aren't you going to have a drink? Well, I'd rather get moving. Oh, we've got hours yet. We could go for a drive. Mm. You just arrived. I want a drink. Now you sit there. Are you funny? Am I? Hmm. In this mad rush. Well, don't you want to go? You know I do. I'm crazy about Bermuda. But it's all so frantic. You only told me a couple of hours ago. I'm a man of action. Are you, darling? Here's to us. A new life under the sun. Mm. I don't really know you very well. It's been over here. I don't know anything about you. You need to? Sometimes I'm curious. You know what curiosity did? It killed the golden goose. Exactly. I think... I think you're a man of mystery. Hmm. What are these scars? Well, I suppose I told you this wasn't my original face. Ask no questions. Yeah, no lies. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we have a beautiful relationship. Better still in Bermuda. Mm. I still can't believe it. Breakfast on the beach. 
By the way, did you ask the American Express to send a man here? No. I thought there'd been a mistake. What happened? Oh, a man go around. What sort of man? Rather nice. American. What did he say? He wanted to check the travel arrangements. Did you tell him? Mm-hmm. I didn't think it mattered. How long ago was this? About 15 minutes. I'm sorry, darling. Did I say anything wrong? I, but you never tell me anything. It's not your fault. Who was this man? Trouble. What do you mean? Don't ask questions. Just let me handle this. I don't. Trust me. Now, no, get your coat. We're going for that drive. See what we catch. Are you following someone? No, you are. You've got to choose. You can stick with me and ask no questions, or you can go your own way. I'll stick. Good girl. You won't regret it. We'll make Bermuda yet. Have you done anything terrible? No questions. I'm just worried about you. You needn't be. Is it? You get out of here. Go home. Wait for me. I'll be back shortly. Who should tell me? Take care of yourself. Now, come on, take it. You were a great help to me. Really appreciate it, man. Well, I'd ask you what we've been doing all day, but I don't think I want to know. That's right. We are repeating a police message put out earlier today. Scotland Yard are anxious to interview a man who was present at the scene of the murder of Thomas Nolan. The man is American, six feet tall, 13 stone, slate gray hair. His name is McGill. Come on, what's he playing at? Perhaps he's not there. Of course he is. Did you see him? I know he's there. Well, this time you've been too clever. He's in those bushes. He's got to come out. Well, what's to stop him going to the police? He knows we're here now. He's desperate. The cops want him. By the time he turns himself in and explains we've gone, he's holding the brass ring. So where is he? Give him time. You're shown. How much time we got? Wait much longer, genius, and we've Shh. lost that plane. That's it. Five minutes. Go out and get him. And what about you? I'll give you cover. Oh, you've got brains, haven't you? That's why I give the orders. But you haven't got any guts. That's why I do the work. You've had your share of the money. I've earned it. This is your last job. Don't think I'm doing it for you. Put that light out. Give me some cover.
what's the matter, big boy? Are you afraid? Nolan was afraid, wasn't he? Didn't do him any good. You know, I think I'm going to enjoy blowing your head off. Okay, Allison, I'm coming up. I don't move. If you move, I fire. So if you want to stay alive, you just be still. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, give me that. And find the phone downstairs. Yes, sir. Your work? Well, who are they? That's Mr. and Mrs. Frank Arnoldson. They pulled the airport job. No, I remember his face. It wasn't like that. Well, take a good look. Now, you see those scars? That's plastic surgery. And his fingerprints will tell you for sure. You hope? Has to be. Must have got himself a new face after that robbery. It's a pretty good one, too. Even had you fooled. And who killed her? Arnoldson, or the chauffeur. Maybe your lab boys could figure that out for you. The what chauffeur? Theirs. In fact, he ought to be coming around about now. He's outside in the bushes. He killed Nolan. And why? Because Nolan recognized her face. Took a few pictures. I guess he wanted a reward. So he got it. And Arnoldson wanted to make sure nobody else recognized her, so she got it. And when I tracked him here, he tried to get me, and he got it. Uh, can you uh, prove all this? Look, Buster, you're the cop. You prove it. I just want to know how much my reward's going to be. Now we catch you in one lie. Just one little lie. And you're put away for good. There's one thing that bothers me. Yes? I can't figure out why she didn't have her face changed. <laughs> you're not so smart, McGill. Well, enlighten me, sir. Well, she was a woman. What I can't understand is why Arnoldson didn't get out of the country months ago. Well, he was a man.